As you can see, joining us here in studio to discuss the situation is Lisa Ruth, former CIA analyst and Lignet analyst, and Skyping in, Lignet's chief analyst, Fred Flights, joining us from Washington. Uh, we appreciate you both being here today. And Fred, uh, since you're long distance, so to speak, we'll go to you first. Why are we seeing an uptick in violence uh, there in Libya? Well, first, John, duration of what happened in 2011. A, a stable government was never set up. The government was relying on armed militias uh, to uh, carry out security. There was an attack on the airport in Tripoli by Islamist groups two weeks ago. They were fighting a, a group that was not Islamist, was probably still pretty radical. Um, with all the weapons, with all these militia groups there, and with the lack of government institutions, there really seems to be no end in sight to, to, to this chaos in the country. Well, Fred, we know that Libya was one of the only places where we saw a very concrete response from the Obama administration in terms of military action. It does not seem to have gotten us very far, though, based on what's happened over the weekend. Well, the Obama administration's response to, to the overthrow of Gaddafi was very limited. Uh, the, the bulk of the action against Gaddafi was taken by the British and the French, and after Gaddafi was overthrown, uh, Western states didn't send much security assistance. Now, on one hand, they, that can be understood because the Libyan government did not want a foreign footprint in the country, but it's pretty clear that most Western countries were focusing on ways to exploit the oil resources of Libya and not setting up a, a stable government structures. Mm. So, Lisa, we have a situation where we had our diplomats evacuated. I think a lot of people looking at this domestically say, well, okay, what, what's the big deal? We know there are problems in Libya. But how important is it for the United States to maintain its embassy and keep it open in a Libya torn asunder by conflict? I, I do think we should keep the embassy open. I think it's important to have a, a diplomatic presence. That said, I also think it's important to get the people out. As Fred said, you know, this is something that's really been going on, and it's, it's, we've traced this all the way back. As early as June 2nd, there were indications that the U.S. was moving to evacuate the embassy. We are starting to prepare for it. It is incredibly volatile there. The, the fighting is increasing. And in terms of safety, it, you just have to evacuate the people. And the British, we're not the only one doing it. There's more and more people trying to take the same measure. Well, as we take a look at what's going on there, Fred, with these different Islamic militias uh, battling in a variety of venues, including battling for control of the international airport in Tripoli, Fred, if these militias or one of them gains control, what does it mean for, for the future of Libya? Well, there's always a concern that if an Islamist group like that took, care, took control of Libya, it would become a, 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 a base for Islamist operations in the region. But that's not going to happen. There are so many militia groups, and they're not just split between Islamists and non-Islamists. They're split by tribe and by region. There doesn't seem to be any solution to this. I think what's going to happen if the violence doesn't stop is that the country will break up into several parts. I don't think Libya as a whole will be governed by anyone. Hmm. Well, you know, Fred, we look at this throughout the region and, and more of North Africa here. We see the emergence of General al-Sisi, now President al-Sisi in Egypt. What type of uh, impact will he have? I mean, at least there's some sort of return to stability in Egypt, it at least it appears that way. Well, Sisi tapped on the, the fatigue by the Egyptian people of the Muslim, Muslim Brotherhood and is, uh, efforts to establish an Islamist government that didn't work on, under the previous president. And although Sisi has certainly been stomping on democratic ideals, the Egyptian people are tired of protests in the streets that, that last for months. They want stability, and I think that's why they've united behind him. And given that whole notion of stability, and Lisa, I know hindsight is always 2020, but Gaddafi, who was such a bad actor in the 80s and 90s, post 9-11, it seemed to a lot of us that suddenly he had, uh, he had been broken. Suddenly he was adhering to a more pro-Western, maybe pro-American stance. In retrospect, was the elimination of Gaddafi the worst thing that happened in Libya? 
I think, again, it depends who you talk to. In terms of stability, there's no question if you look at all these situations where you, when you get rid of the strong man who's been keeping a lid on things, stability is suffering. There's no question. Now, human rights may be another issue. And to your point, there was a movement by Gaddafi af after all these years. We know he did make some, some gains or some um, attempts to be more on our side or more pro-West. He was somebody we could work with. That said... The, the fighting in Libya right now is, as Fred said, I think it's something that we can't, it, we're not really defining quite well. It is so broken. It is so completely broken. There is, I, I don't think the central government controls it now. I don't think they have, and I don't think they will. And with Gaddafi gone, they're really, that appearance of a government to, to control it is gone. The, the lid is off. And, and Fred, my, my question, you know, based on al-Sisi, is that desire spreading throughout to other countries, perhaps like Libya, where the folks there who don't do want to see a return to stability say, we need a strong man to come back in, maybe not someone exactly like Muammar Gaddafi, but somebody like al-Sisi who can re restore order, if not keep the fundamental human rights alive? There is a general, uh, uh, Khalifa Hifter, who is trying to drive Islamists out of the country, and he is fighting the Islamist militias who are trying to take the Tripoli airport right now. The U.S. has been on both sides of the fence on what this guy is doing. We like the fact that he's going after Islamists, but we don't like his methods. That might be the solution for Libya. They may need a strong man for a period of time to establish order in the country until there can be a transition to democracy. But I don't know that this general has nearly enough support, and I know he's being attacked by uh, regional tribes who are not Islamists, they just don't like him because of where he's from. So, Fred, earlier you mentioned a variety of different militia groups out there. When when we're trying to figure out exactly who is who, and I, I hate to be flippant about this, but the old saying was, you can't, you can't uh, tell the players without a program. You've got so many different groups at work here, and you mentioned some of this being tribal, uh, some of this being Islamist, is there a variant or is ISIS, does ISIS have a presence now in Libya? I don't, I have not heard that ISIS has a presence, although we know that there are Al Qaeda affiliated uh, groups in Libya that are fighting as militias. But I think you're right, you really need a play card because they're divided by religion, they're divided by region, and they're divided by tribe. And some of these groups are fighting each other for reasons that people outside of Libya wouldn't understand. Maybe some historic grievance, and now that they have all the weapons they stole from the Libyan government, they're acting on that grievance. So you've got, uh, dear Fred, uh, tell it, Lisa, you've got age-old tribal grievances at work and basically a, an, an arms bonanza with Libya. So it really, is it too far-fetched to say it's descending into anarchy right now? I think that's that's pretty close to accurate. And when you read the, the Libyan press and the statements by the Libyan people, that's the sense you get from them. There is real chaos. Nobody even knows. And you said the age-old tribal problems, but reading the Twitter feeds, it's fascinating. There's new tribal feuds every day. You know, now they're getting them back for something that happened yesterday and last Friday. It, it's very, very fragmented. There is a real concern inside Libya that we are on the verge of a true civil war, but not one faction against the other. And Fred is exactly right and, and said it very well. The divisions are so fractured and I think the alliances are constantly changing as well. It's very hard to see who's fighting who, for what, for how long. And I do think we're, we're close to chaos. And we do, we do hear these calls for military involvement, you know, in a lot of places, Libby being one of them. We've seen that already. But from Lisa, based on what you're saying, and Fred, maybe you back me up on this, it sounds like this seems like a real dangerous situation where if the U.S. is involved too directly here, it could just uh, blow up in our faces. I, I think that's right. I, I don't see any Western state or the United or, or, or the United States getting getting ready to intervene, with one exception. There's a major fire at an oil refinery near mm -hmm. Tripoli, and there has been interest by European countries in coming in to try to put that out because it's such a humanitarian disaster to the people of Libya. Short of that, I haven't seen any interest in sending in uh, foreign forces. Well, humanitarian, and we've got about a minute and a half left, Lisa, not only humanitarian and environmental concerns, but energy concerns. Again, the Middle East, that Middle Eastern oil uh, remains uh, something that feeds the West and might prompt the Europeans to get involved. I don't know that if it will prompt uh, involvement, but it is, this is another layer on top of 
another complicated factor, the Libyan government just agreed to start exports of oil. That makes oil even more valuable. That makes these tribes and these militias really want control of the oil fields. I think actually that is going to increase fighting, increase control of the trying to get control of these fields. Lisa Ruth in studio and Fred Flights via Skype from Washington DC. We thank you both for your time and your insights. And it's worth noting for in-depth analysis and forecasting on the crisis in Libya and indeed throughout the Middle East you should go to lignet.com. It's your personal CIA for global intelligence. Uh, we'd like to get your take on what's happening in Libya and elsewhere in the Middle East. Why don't you tweet us your comments at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum, or you can uh, write us at this new website, newsmaxtv.com slash comment. And don't forget about Facebook. Our faces are coming right back. <laughs>